Hi everyone and welcome. This is Dawn and this will likely be my Easter message brought to you quite a bit earlier than I was anticipating sharing it this year. But when you get the message and the guidance to go, you go. And I find it interesting because this hadn't occurred to me until I just came outside to record this. But I'm actually in, for the first time, I'm in the same place that I was um, in May of last year when I recorded the video that's right now on my, um, I believe it's the welcome video on my um on my channel, the one that's about um, In Him Was Life, um, and it's about uh, life, which is a message I talk a lot about. So it's fascinating to me that I am back in the same spot because, you know, when I got the the go uh, very strongly this morning to do this, I was like, well, I, I kind of had a date in mind when I was going to do that. That is a significant date that's coming up in a few weeks, um, you know, but it was like, nope, do it today. And you know, I was like, oh, the weather's not perfect, and, you know, wow, there's a lot of other things happening, but it was like, no, do it today, and so it's just beautiful how life unfolds, and I wanted to start by saying that. Um, so I want to also share something that happened this morning, because I think I'm going to tie it, actually, to this message I'm going to share. It's going to seem a little unconventional for an Easter message, but I woke up this morning, and you know how you're in that sort of liminal state between between the worlds, and um, I had a, the lyric of a song that I, I like, but, you know, haven't thought about, um, well, actually I saw it in the movie recently, but other than that, haven't thought about for a lot of years. And it was, uh, I just had the lyric of um, Love of My Life by Queen um, in my in my heart. And so I was just sort of waking up and um, in that, you know, kind of state between um, the waking state and sleep, I was... Um, I was recalling um, a seven-year period of time in my life quite a ways back um, where my life intersected uh, with um, my divine counterpart's life in several different ways and different, it kept changing form in terms of how that intersection was occurring. And, you know, I, as, as you will, I'm sure relate to, I, I loved him, you know, before I met him, before I knew him in this life. Um, and I remembered him always. And, and from the beginning, in terms of our intersections, um, and how that played out, I really was seeking to be at peace with whatever opportunities opened up and not to have any expectation about how it would play out. And actually, for many years, I thought, um, I literally thought, oh, well, this lifetime, I just kind of settled for the fact that it, 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 was, it wasn't possible in this life. So I would sort of, you know, um, allow myself to receive the beauty um, and honor of um, when our lives did um, intersect. And I would, I would take the blessing of that. And that's what I sought to do, not perfectly at all. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, so I was thinking about all of those memories and, and I was thinking about how my intention was always, um, to be content, you know, um, as, um, the apostle Paul wrote, you know, he said, uh, right before he said, I can do all things, um, through him who gives me strength. He, he wrote that for, I have learned to be content with whatever circumstances I am in. And, I've been thinking a lot about contentment lately because I've been making some major changes, letting go of the little last remaining things I was holding on to. Um, and for me, that was about wanting to create the, the home and the serenity and the solitude and the sanctuary that, that I have always longed for in this life um, and wanting to do it all, you know, sort of myself. Um, and... Um, because, if I'm honest, I wasn't trusting that it would ever happen any other way. And um, so anyway, I've been going through this this passage myself with, you know, my next layer of forsaking all else and, and letting go and surrendering. And I woke up to this the lyrics of this, um, this song. And actually, I want to read you the lyrics. I'm going to put on my glasses just to read this here. Um, so uh, it's written by Freddie Mercury and performed by Queen Love of my life, you've hurt me. You've broken my heart, and now you leave me. Love of my life, can't you see? Bring it back, bring it back. Don't take it away from me, because you don't know what it means to me. Love of my life, don't leave me. You've stolen my love, you now desert me. Love of my life, can't you see? Bring it back, bring it back. Don't take it away from me. 
there's a hawk, <laughs> because you don't know what it means to me. You will remember when this is blown over, everything's all by the way. When I grow older, I will be there at your side to remind you how I still love you. I still love you. Oh, hurry back, hurry back. Don't take it away from me because you don't know what it means to me. So as I was uh, laying there and just that, that song, it was as it literally was as if the song was being sung to me. Um, it wasn't really Freddie Mercury's voice, so I don't I don't exactly know. But I was I was hearing that lyric and um, and remembering all of these memories, um, you know, that had to do with my twin. But I was also layered on that, really getting very strongly um, all sorts of memories that had to do with lions um, in my life and in my knowing. And, you know, traces of the story that I remember about the little lion in France and all the symbols that I saw there in the just the short time I was in the south of France. And the stories that are remembered and are carried through, um, even even though it appears at times that there's not that full recognition, it's there. It's hidden in plain sight. And I was remembering the lion symbols in, in England and in Ireland and a book that I read when I was much younger on Egypt and the significance of lions and a short story I had read about lions and my experience um, in Kentucky in um, at the cabin in Kentucky where there was, you know, a light in the forest and, and the significance of lions with what unfolded there. So lions were really present for me this morning. And, and so lions, what do they represent? They represent strength and courage and the sun and fierce love. Um, at least that's what comes to mind for me. So think about that. What do lions represent for you? So as I was seeing all these lions, I had the strongest sense, again, that I needed to share this Easter video today. And so I, that didn't seem right because it's April 6th. It's, you know, I think Easter's, I don't know. I don't even know the date. It's like late in April, though. And um, I didn't really feel like actually the message that I thought I was going to share for Easter was quite ready. It's... Um, uh, I may come back and, and make a second video, but the message that I had intended to share um, all along was about, um, that. well, the images that I have are of a golden egg that is fully formed and just beginning to, to, to crack, and then from that egg is emerging um, a, new, a whole new paradigm. So I, you know, I took a shower and I, these lions were so strongly present for me. I literally got in the shower here. I'm staying at, a, at someone else's home and um, on the um, tile, you know how on the, um, oh, what kind of tile is it called? Like uh, travertine is that what it's called, but the really nice tile. Um, there's like, you know how there are little like, patterns woven in? I swear every single one of them looked like a lion. Um, and so this lion imagery was just so present and so strong. And like literally everything I did this morning was like lion, lion, lion. And so I did a, a, just a quick um, little research on lions. Um, you know, of course, I have my own uh, connection with lions. And actually lions were very significant for me uh, growing up. But I'm not going to diverge into that right now. But um, so I did a little research and I found something new that I had never discovered before. And that is that um, once um, uh, in history, actually, uh, around the time of Christ, there was um, a belief that newborn lion pups were born dead and that they only came alive when the father passed his breath on to the lion pup. And so there's what I was reading was that, you know, in Christianity, this um, the father lion was representative of Christ and um, his breath being breathed into the children um, to awaken, um, to awaken their spirits to the light of God and the love of God. And I thought that was quite beautiful. I had never heard that before. And, and then was thinking, too, about some blogs I've written back, uh, you know, a referencing the Lion King story and and uh, in particular I can't remember when this was but I shared one um, about this song can you feel the love tonight and um, you know it's such a beautiful beautiful song and I was feeling as I was thinking of all of these lion symbols I was feeling such deep love and um, Jesus was very present through throughout this morning um, here on April 6th. It's Saturday. Also, I, I even tried to like, well, okay, I'll do it this weekend. Let's do it tomorrow because it's Sunday, you know, and, and you no, know, it needs to be today. So um, it's interesting. It's my parents' anniversary and I don't 
uh, know that there's any connection there, but but perhaps. Um, so I was thinking of um, this lion cub uh, myth or legend that the lion pups are born dead and that the life must be breathed into them by the father, the breath of life. I was thinking about the breath of life. And the the um, message that came to me to share, like I said, is quite different than the one that I had planned to share. Um, and it's really about the lion and the lamb and the the idea that God was drawing me back to this morning that the lion is the lamb and the lamb is the lion and that both of these um, images here um, at Easter 2019 have something to say to us and the journey that we are making. So I want to begin by reading to you from Revelation chapter 5, which um, as I was um as all of this was being brought to me, this was another um, strong image that came to me. It's Revelation chapter 5, and I'm just going to read the entire uh, chapter. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. He went, I'm sorry, he went into the, yeah, I already said that. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp and they were holding golden bowls, bowls full of, incense, which are the prayers of God's people. That's beautiful. I've never thought of that one before. Each one had a harp. Each of the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And they sang a new song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. The lion is the lamb. The lion is the lamb. There is within this truth that the lion is the lamb, a reconciliation. There is a return to rest and an era of restoration where love will reign again. And that picture in that chapter, Revelation 5, I invite you to go read that, is so stunningly beautiful. It just fills my heart with such love, that, that image. Um, the lion is the lamb. As in all things, there are truths in life and within the transformative path of Jesus, that light of Christ who is always coming into the world, there's so much there for us to learn from and to embody and to receive now, for this is the gift of life, and it is why Jesus came, that we might have life and have it to the full. And we, his people, and in particular, we who are called to this particular path, passing through the narrow gate and walking in the way of honor and glory and praise. We, we are his people, and we are both lion-hearted, and we are lambs of God, belonging to God, to the one good shepherd. And 
So we, we have aspects, both of the lion and the lamb, and this is our lineage, and it is the gift of grace as we walk forward on this path of sacred partnership. We, his people, are lion-hearted, and we are the lambs of God. So let's, book, uh, let's look both at, um, we will look at the good book, but we will look both at um, this imagery of the lion and the lamb and maybe what we can draw forward. Um, there are times when I'm going to look down at my notes just because I, I wrote down the things, that, the, the key points that I was given to share. So you'll see me looking down. If that's distracting, just listen to this, um, please. Um, so we are, the, we are lion-hearted and we are the lambs of God. So let's start with lion-hearted. We are lion-hearted, belonging to to the lion tribe of Judah. You know, Jesus, the lion of Judah. We belong to Yeshua. We belong as those, those 12 tribes being called together again. We belong to one God who is love. And even now, we are being called out with this mighty roar of love. And I know that many of you can feel it just as I do. It is, it is like growing louder and louder and more pure and more consistent. Um, and it's, um, it's beautiful and majestic. And there is nothing like it in this world. And we are being called out with that mighty roar of love that echoes from the deep. It echoes from the depths within us. And it echoes from the depths of all creation and the breadth of all creation. It's, it's echoing and it's, it's a, again, it's, it's growing, growing in, um, in volume. Yes, but more in a resonance, you know, and we are, are resonating with it and we are coming into reconciliation with this law of love that we are also here to bring forward, um, and to restore that law here upon the earth in the, in these times, in our times, just as Jesus came to, um, to be fully, uh, to embody perfect love. And while we do not embody that love perfectly, yet we are, you know, pressing on, we are moving toward that, and we are committed to that path. So this roar of love that is just, it's calling all things back to life. It's what I often refer to as this field of recreation in which we are um, becoming more and more of who we are um, at our pure essence and bringing that forward. And that, again, is so resonant with this, this roar of love. So we are lion-hearted, belonging to the tribe of the Lion of Judah, we are lion-hearted, and this is the first point. We are lion-hearted, and the law of love is written on our hearts. So I was reminded of the, the Shema, which is in Deuteronomy um, and um, in the Jewish tradition, and I, I can't speak to all of this, just what I the little that I know. What it says is, uh, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Ikad. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's those are the um, Hebrew words, which means, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. We are lion-hearted, and the law of love is written on our hearts. There's a beautiful part in Deuteronomy, I don't have that open right now, that's talking about um, what is written on the hearts. Uh, by God, by the finger of God. So the law of love is written on our hearts and we carry that. That is who we are. It is one with who we are and it makes us lion-hearted. This is the call of love that returns us to the truth of life and all the ways that we belong to one another. And, you know, because we are, we are many tribes but one people, we have many expressions and many names for God and many ways of honoring the source of all life and all love, but one faith, one Lord, one baptism, as it says in the New Testament, one God who is love and from whom all blessings flow through time in every dimension, in every conceivable reality. It is the law of love that reigns supreme. And it is the law of love that we are here to represent as the lion-hearted. In the New Testament, Paul uh, wrote in his uh, letter to the Romans, he said that love is the fulfillment of the law. So this idea of the law of love and how it is written on our hearts to me is very resonant this year, 2019 at Easter. 
And we are one tribe, one of the, with the Lion tribe of Judah, and we are here to be the fulfillment of the law through love, by embodying love. And yes, that does mean the love between us, the two twins. Um, it means the love that we have for the one tribe, and the one God, and the one Lord, and the one faith. And it also means our love for humanity, and our absolute um, uh, conviction that it is love that is the answer always and it is it, that God is love and that love is God and that we are here to know more and more of that love so that's the first way that I see us being lion-hearted and that was shown to me this morning in a variety of images and I'm doing my best to articulate it I hope it's coming through all right um, the second so first is we are lion-hearted the law of love is written on our hearts and then the second truth in terms of the lion-hearted nature um, is that we are lion-hearted awakening and awakened to the resurrection and the life so like that newborn lion let's go back to that image and thought dead, but the risen Christ breathes new life into us always. And then by that breath of God, breath of life, breath of love, and that power of that love, by that, through that, we are awakened to the light and the life and the love that is right there within us. And it is brought forth, it is raised up to new life. And, and that love is the resurrection and the life. It is the very heartbeat of creation. So nearly all of us probably have, listening to me, you've probably experienced um, the rise of life within you to one degree or another, whether that is through um, your, your faith and journey and, and or religion, or whether that is just, um, for, for me, it often comes through nature. So whether that is the revelation of a mystery as it occurs through nature or however it comes or whether it actually comes through your, your vessel and through your physical body. And likely it's, it's all of those and much, much more more because there is no limit to how the resurrection and the life is brought forward in this time and that this is what we are here to, to be teachers of love by walking in the way and by living our lives um, by being present to this revelation that is always happening to the resurrection and the life that we are one with and and so as you think about those times when you've experienced that rise of life the just know that this is the gift freely given to you, and it is a calling. It is a calling to be lion-hearted, to be awakened more and more and more to the resurrection and the life. And when we are awakened to our true lion nature, we have a responsibility to honor that resurrection and the life through our actions, through our words, through our deeds, which brings us to the third facet of the heart of a lion. So the first two is we are lion-hearted, the law of love is written on our hearts. The second is we are lion-hearted, awakening, awakening to and awakened to the resurrection and the life. And the third is we are lion-hearted, here to move with grace and courage to join together and live in love. So how is that possible to join together and to live in love for, for us as a collective um, and, and for us as a twin and, and in, the, in the dynamic um, of sacred partnership and, quite frankly, in our own individual lives? Like, how does that work? Okay, so how can we possibly uh, move with grace and courage and join together? Well, first, we have to gather our strength and our courage. We're not asked to rely on our own strength, though. I, in in uh, in Deuteronomy, also in the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament, there's um, I think it's when they're crossing over the Jordan. I'm not actually sure at this moment, but it's there's that verse, you know, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified uh, because of what they were seeing out there. For the Lord your God goes with you; He will never leave you or forsake you. Now let that sink in. He will never leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous, not of your own might, not of your own power. Be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God goes with you. Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us in the person of Jesus. That's the gift. That is the resurrection and the life that is always with us. And by, through that, through that resurrection and 
and that life and our embrace of that through our lion hearts, then we are able to move forward with grace and courage to join together and to live in love. In Isaiah um, chapter 41, let me see if I wrote this down. Yeah. Um, Isaiah the prophet wrote, So do not fear, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So do not fear, do not be, be not dismayed, be not dismayed for I am your God. And this is our strength. This is the source of the courage that we carry forward in these lion hearts. And this is how we find the strength to move forward with, you know, courageously and to, and to uh, stay to this, this path and to uh, walk in the way of love. We remember the promise of God that we are not alone. This is not, not by our strength you know, but by his spirit, you know, in, um, Jesus's last days when he sat on the hillside with the disciples and he said, my peace, I leave you not as the world gives you. And then he promised the spirit, the Holy spirit. He also spoke, um, it's just before, you know, it's just like right, right before the series of events that led to the crucifixion. And he said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. And then he talked about how in his father's house, there were many rooms and he was going to prepare a place for us. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I also will come back to take you with me and that you may be where I am and, and then he says at the end, he says something curious. He says, you know the place I am going. You know the way. And that, that's something that in my heart I, I remember often, you know, you know, Jesus saying that it was always about how that way is opening up and how we, we are, we know, our hearts know these things. And particularly those, um, and this is all of us, this is all of humanity, um, are lion hearted. Um, but, and some of us, you know, are, are really fortunate and blessed in order to receive fully, you know, these, these, these promises and, and understand because our hearts do remember in a, perhaps a, um, um, a, a different way. Um, and so, because we are granted this great privilege, we have a responsibility to to do something with those that remembrance and to put love into action, not just to savor it for ourselves, but to share it with all the world. And so we are lion hearted walking in the way of love that we remember. And so you know the way and you are invited to walk within it. And now it's as if like the way I see it almost is as if we, because we have been, we have been, um, immersed in this way of love and blessed to live a life of love. We are also here to prepare a place on earth in order that, that, that the earth, um, might, uh, experience the fullness of that love and receive the fulfillment of the promise that is love and where he is indeed where he is we are where we are he is he is risen in our hearts in our lion hearts he is alive so we are lion hearted and just as we are lion hearted we are also lambs of God so as lambs, I think for a moment about little lambs. When I lived in Ireland, it was amazing, the lambing season. Well, it was just kind of sad because, you know, they were slaughtered. But um, but they were so innocent, so pure, so beautiful, so tender, so unknowing um, of what lay ahead and yet so trusting. And And they were... They had to be watched over and guided and cared for and directed. And this is what this is what we can we are assured of is that the same gift is given to us, for we are lambs of God. We who are called forward to bring this law of love into fruition and to restore the peaceable kingdom, we are lambs. We are little lambs of God, and we are well cared for and protected by Jesus, the good shepherd, the keeper of the flock, the light of the world.
coming into the world always. In the first chapter of John, which I, I cite often, you know, John the baptizer saw Jesus and he says several times, behold, the Lamb of God. Behold. So little lambs that we are, we have to remember to look up to look up and see the light of God, to feel the love of God moving through us, to remember whose we are, this, this life to which we belong and how we belong to each other, you know, both the, the two and, and the larger group of those of us who share this sacred, sacred mission of bringing forward the law of love on earth. And so... In the life of Jesus, the one who was innocent, was he was slain, he was raised up again, he was exalted highly. And, you know, as it said in, in Revelation, worthy is a lamb who was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and praise. This lamb of God, Jesus, is the gate through which we, the sheep, the little lambs, pass. He is the good shepherd who knows us, and we know him by name. We know his voice. We hear his voice. We listen. We respond. And this is the way that we are led forward on this journey. We, lambs of God, we've been gathered up. We've been given so great a privilege, as I said, and we have been invited to walk with him and to pass through those gates into what awaits. And sometimes that is the unknown. And sometimes we don't know if we, you know, we may wonder if we're being just led to the slaughter um, and it can be difficult. But what we can always do is to turn our eyes back to Jesus, son of the living God. We are lambs. We are lambs of God. We are lambs of God called by name and known by heart. And we are loved. We are loved beyond measure. So that's the first, um, first little piece here is we are lambs of God called by name and known by heart. In uh, John 10, 10, which I cite often, Jesus says clearly, he says what his purpose, his mission, his, uh, he succinctly says, I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. And in that chapter of John 10, there's a beautiful imagery that he uses about the sheep and the good shepherd. So consider the context of his declaration of why he was here, which is a love that can only come from the heart of a lion in terms of Jesus, the Lion of Judah. And, and consider this. And so listen to what he says. This is John chapter 10. He says, very truly, I tell you, he's talking to the Pharisees. He says, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by his name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, he said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. We are lambs of God called by name and known by heart. We are loved beyond measure. And we are also the lambs of God, one flock with one shepherd. So let's look at that. Let's uh, continue reading in John chapter 10. This is picking up with verse 11. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Consider that. Okay, the hired hand. Let's just play that out in terms of our earthly reality. Who is that? Okay, so, but Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Um, so, 
when the uh, hired hand sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep, he runs away, and the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. And then in that chapter, so like the people who are listening to Jesus, you know, start saying, oh, good, this guy's raving mad. He's demon possessed. Why would we listen to this guy? Um, and then there's, you know, the arguing back and forth. And, and then in um, the winter, Jesus is walking in Solomon's colonnade and um, the people gathered around him are saying like, uh, like, hey, if you're really the Messiah, you know, speak it, tell us. And in verse 25, um, it picks up and Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe the works I do in my father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. So that um, really reminds me of a beautiful passage that Paul wrote in um, in Romans, um, you know, where he says, you know, no one and nothing can separate us from the love of God. And that love of God is made manifest in the life of Jesus of Nazareth, first and foremost. That's the primary revelation. And it is poured out. It's poured out as a river that's running through all of life, through us here and now. And we are one flock with one shepherd. We know his voice and we listen for it. And this is the second teaching about we being uh, lambs, the lambs of God. The third is that we are the lambs of God and our innocence is honored and protected. So some of us on this um, sacred in fulfilling the sacred mission um, to restore um, the law of love to usher in a revolution of love we um, have experienced times where we may have been um, singled out targeted even by those who proclaim to be on you know on God's side if you will um, and and like the prophet Jeremiah you know we have um, been maybe plotted against and or there have been false accusations or there have been other um, attempts to ensnare us uh, or to distract us. Um, I think that plays different out differently for, um, yeah, for all of us. And I'll, I'll leave that as it is. But, but like the prophet Jeremiah, we can trust that God will reveal to us what is needed, what we need to be aware of, and will always bring us back to the law of love to the truth and the life and the way that is, it is our heritage. It is, you know, our, it's to whom we belong, the one flock, the one shepherd. And, and so in Jeremiah um, chapter 11, let me just read a little bit here. Um, Jeremiah 11, starting with uh, verse 18, because the Lord revealed their plot to me, I knew it. For at that time he showed me what they were doing. I had been like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I did not realize that they had plotted against me, saying, let us destroy the tree and its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name be remembered no more. But you, Lord Almighty, who judge righteously and test the heart and mind, let me see your vengeance on them, for to you I have committed my cause. We are the lambs of God, and we are committed to one cause, and this is the cause of love. I always think of that word, be cause, be the cause, be the cause of love, be the causeway. Um, and so like Jeremiah, we can trust just as God revealed to Jeremiah what he needed to be aware of the ways that, you know, people were perhaps plotting against him or trying to deceive, um, or, or, 
uh, layer things upon um, what he was doing or ascribe you know, motive or scheming to disrupt his service, whatever. There is the revelation um, f to us where it is needed, and we can trust that. We are carried, we are carried close to the heart of God, and our sacred mission is always honored and protected. It may not seem seem that in the moment, that in the passages that we go through. I know that for me, there have been times when I have really, like, I have almost, I feel like I was in a dark room and there was no light and there was no hope and there was no revelation and there was no help. But always, always what is unfolding is that we are being held and the sacred mission is always protected and there is support and we can trust in this way that we are walking. And in this way, we we are, you know, lion-hearted and at the same time, lambs of God, many tribes, but one people here at the this new cradle of civilization and a civilization that is defined by freedom and by love and by honor. So that third, um, that third truth is we are the lambs of God, our innocence honored and protected. I want to share with you, um, just to, to close out this, this Easter message portion, is um, I want to share the words um, of the prophet Isaiah from chapter 40. He says this, he says, You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up and do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes that's funny, I said love. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arm and carries them close to his heart. We are the lambs of God gathered up, carried close to the heart of God. And then, as Isaiah says, uh, a little bit later in that same chapter. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to us from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? So as I was sitting down this morning, just when I first came out, um, side, I saw the image of the heart of Jesus that, you know, that, um, sacred heart image that you see in many of the ancient, um, symbols and, and in particular in the Catholic tradition, I saw the heart of Jesus and it was just like exploding from it, not exploding, but gushing forward from it were these, such a love. I mean, this energetic signatures, these, this river of life that, it was love. It was purity. It was innocence. It was beauty. It was the restoration of all things. And it is such a lion-hearted love from the Lamb of God. And, and I felt it. And I felt that, you know, in those moments when I, I see things like that, they're so brief um, and yet so powerful and so true. And I know them to be the, the, the truest truth of all. And, and then again, as I saw that, I heard the echo of the lyrics that I woke up to, which is, like I said, a little in unconventional. But I'm going to close with this today. Um, and so again, these are uh, the lyrics that were written by Freddie Mercury of Queen um, when he was alive. And um, think of this. I, when, I, when I heard these lyrics after I saw that image of Yeshua and his love for us, It was just so beautiful. And then he brought me back to these lyrics, and I heard them in a different way. And I heard the heart of Jesus calling to us this Easter and always, saying, Love of my life, you've hurt me. You've broken my heart, and now you leave me. Love of my life, can't you see? Bring it back. Bring it back. Don't take it away from me, because you don't know what it means to me. Love of my life, don't leave me. You've stolen my love, you now desert me. Love of my life, can't you see? Bring it back, bring it back. Don't take it away from me because you don't know what it means to me. You will remember when this is blown over, everything's all by the way. 
When I grow older, I will be there at your side to remind you how I still love you. I still love you. How I still love you. Hurry back. Hurry back. Don't take it away from me because you don't know what it means to me. And while, no, Freddie Mercury did not write those lyrics about Jesus, or at least I don't think so, um, I, there's something there. There's something so beautiful because we are being called back right now in this time. And this is our time and it is the time of love. And it is the time to be both lion-hearted and to remember that we are lambs of God. With, with the one shepherd, belonging to the one tribe, the one love that is God. So to wrap it up, I'm going to repeat the um, key points, which is um, lion-hearted. We are lion-hearted, the law of love written on our hearts. We are lion-hearted, awakening to and awakened to the resurrection and the life. We are lion-hearted, here to move with grace and courage to join together and live in love. And then we are lambs of God. We are lambs of God called by name, known by heart, loved beyond measure. We are lambs of God, one flock, one shepherd. We are lambs of God, our innocence honored and protected. We are lion-hearted. We are lambs of God, carried close, close to the heart of God. We are raised up to new life this Easter and always every day in every moment. In every heartbeat of creation, there is the resurrection and the life at work within us and through us and around us. And because Jesus is alive and he is the light of the world and the light of Christ, we are given the free gift to carry that forward into all the world and to be his disciples even to the ends of the earth. We are we're standing together under one banner of love that is everlasting. So go forward. Go forward, you the lion-hearted, you the lambs of God, the little lambs. And we all can come together now as one people. For now, right now, here on April the 6th, 2019, and the rest of April, and into all the months and years and decades and centuries and millenniums to come for now is always our next opportunity window and now is always the time of beginning again.